I'm like chosen, selected. They same like the, sound like the goddamn same thing. God damn it. <laughs> Either way, they was both fire. I can't even. Front. I can't even. Front. It was cousins. It was, it was cousins. Like Siamese twins. All right, you ready? You about to jump off this bridge, man. What's going on, y'all? Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Free Lunch with The Real Free. Free food for your soul, y'all. Shout out to our sponsors this season. Dobie and Rollins Orthodontics helping you love your smile. Free Branding, LLC. The best version of your brand starts here. Big shout out to Track Major Productions. Make sure y'all go to the links in the description of this episode. You can find all of our sponsors. Every single episode is right there. Show them some love. I got today here. My man, my youngin, my nephew, Jay Den in the building. Give it up for him, y'all. Thank you so much, man, for coming through. Appreciate you. Appreciate of course, you, man. Thank you for having me, man. I get to touch the ring. <laughs> yeah. So how old are you now, man? Uh, So I know last time we spoke, that was when I had just turned 23. So I'm 24 now. Oh, where? I'm like three weeks old. You had to do the arithmetic like that? <laughs> yeah, I had like, to think. I'm like, because last time I was a little kid up here. <laughs> I love it. So we had, this time we was bringing in this birthday though in a major, major way. Mm -hmm. All right. We couldn't just have like the big celebration at Chuck E. Cheese like everybody else does. You feel me? I don't know why. Personally, I love Chuck E. Cheese pizza. You know what I mean? They're not a sponsor here. So I don't want y'all to think like, you know, they made me say that. I just genuinely love Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Um, But you decided to, I'll let you tell the people. How did you decide to bring in your birthday? What, what was it just the, the in general, the idea? Um, just to bring in my birthday in like the most high fashion way possible. The most extra. You could you could say it how you mean it. I mean, I just, I just wanted to extra, showcase something that wasn't Most fantastic. <laughs> make sure that can't nobody else try to duplicate it ever in their life way. Yeah. I got, like I brought together... Um, the concept of me wanting to put together like my toughest fit and then realize that the only way to have a tougher fit is to have everybody in a tough fit. And I feel like you can't require that from everybody at a birthday party, but you can at a fashion show. That was, that was, that was like low key, high key, the f- most fires thing I heard in 2023. This dude said, what's, what's better than me looking tough is, is everybody looking tough. That's fire, bro. <laughs> that might even mess around and be the title of this episode. I might have to play with that one. Can I steal that? Can I can I, I mean, borrow it at least? Yeah. Just don't take On lease, can I just lease it for maybe a season? That's fire. So yo, man, with no further ado, man, introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Uh, you know, I know the list is mad long, the amazingness, but just just give them the brief <laughs> version of who you are, and then we're gonna introduce again one of the other guests we got on the show today. So I am Jaden Pressy. Um, right now I go by Striz. That's my like fashion handle. Um, and as the reason why I'm here now is because throughout the course of 2023, I kind of became an influencer slash role model for the fashion community. And I think that that's a place where I feel the most comfort. And I think that's really where I felt comfortable saying that I wanted to throw a fashion show without you know being scared to say that it was a big idea, you know? I respect that. That's what's up. All right. And then speaking of this major, huge event where you had a bunch of other people with the toughest gear, you had to incorporate the help of some some super fly models, mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. people, you know, uh, local and, 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 and abroad, yeah. right? So we were blessed to be able to get one of the, the models um, that were able to be a part of the show, my man Say in the building. What's going on? What's going on? Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Say just real quick, introduce yourself to the people. Let them know who you are. Uh, What does you do? Most people know me as uh, Say. Uh, A lot of new people that's me and me know me as Eastside Lenny. But um, I'm an artist, producer, originally from the Bronx slash Connecticut. And also, you know, a model as well. And yeah, I was part of the uh, Selected, the Chosen show that my boy Strizz had put on. I love it. Now, this was not your first time modeling or being in a, a show, was it? No, no. So how 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 long have you been modeling? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I've been modeling for as long as since the last time I did a show. I've done maybe, this was probably my third or fourth show. Um, mm-hmm. When I had started doing music, I was working with um, a friend of mine, 
um, that started a brand called Seven Views. And I was doing like a lot of modeling for him, just on his gear, his sweatsuits, his pieces and whatnot. And I walked in about like maybe one or two okay. shows for him and performed at one. So, yeah, uh, it was good to get like this refresher. And honestly, no one's ever put it on like, be it that I did do all that modeling stuff back then. I've never done a scale like Striz, you know, yeah. put me on to. So this is by far how, the how biggest and most official. How does that make you feel to hear someone even refer to something you put on like, yo, I've never done something on a scale that you were responsible of putting together like i think it's it's refreshing to to hear on the back end of things because like when you go through the process it's like you kind of don't realize the magnitude that the event's gonna like leave on the public and on the community when you're going through that process of saying like yo i just want everybody to feel comfortable you know expressing themselves on an elevated level and it's like, you know, you're given the platform to not only yourself, but to the brands involved and the models to kind of express their creativity. But you don't notice the scale comparison when your only focus was to be in your lane, you know? Yeah. So I think that's like to, to hear like comparatively, it's like a nice moment to know that, OK, like in comparison to most other fashion shows, yeah, like it's, yeah. it's not normal. So I kind of like, it, there, yeah. yeah, like it kind of pushes me to want to do better. But yeah. in competition with myself, I want to do better anyway, you know? Yeah. So say, what was the actual brand that you walked for, that you modeled for? Uh, Seven Views. It was a brand by a friend of mine named Javan. Javan. Um, that was about like four years, four years ago. I want to say, what, 2023. Views. All right. Shout out to Seven Views. Yeah, um, with, and that was the only brand you walked for? Um, The other ones, I couldn't even tell you, honestly, because okay. I'm saying like since I've been opened up to the way it's supposed to be done now. Yep. It's like uh, I I know I know exactly the standard of it now. So if any anybody that's gonna ask me next, I'm probably gonna only say I, I modeled in the the chosen the, the selected yeah, show. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? it. That's the standard. Wow, that's tough, that's tough dude. <laughs> I out loud that is. Kind so of tough. I mean, you know, looking at you know my man say right here. I mean, he looks like a handsome dude. You know what I mean? Like for sure. fly. Like for you when you were. At the selected phase, right? Um, that was the first phase, right? The the chosen. The chosen was the yeah, first yeah, the phase. Chosen you're going to cho choose like the the models. For for say just specifically because he's here in the studio with us. What what was it about him that drew you to him? I think it was or like how it was did that a, even happen? Like it was like a mutual draw. Um, we actually met in one of the designer studios. Um, Brent from Dead by Five AM. He's like okay. a big brother to me. And like, I kid you not, every aspect of fashion since I started walking more confidently as Striz, he's played like a very dominant role in that. Like he's helped me with Love the screen it. printing. He's taught me a lot of stuff. So I went down there just to work on stuff for the fashion show. Yeah. And as I was going in, you know, I was talking to you before about how I wanted to do the promotion video. Yep. I wanted to show people that yep. the new lane I wanted to go into was more like a creative director and producer. So as I'm going down to talk about my promo video, he's in there waiting on a piece. So we just started chopping it up. And then since I know he... So you wasn't even like going to... Didn't even know him from a camp. Like I've never seen yeah, him Me and my brother too. It yeah, was him no. and his brother. Scrap. Yeah, and Aaron. Like, And they're just, yeah. they're just both in there being them, just chilling. And just we just chilling. started talking. And then I wanted to shoot my next promo video. But the day that I had booked with my boys, we had to reshoot. And they ended up not being able to make it. And I'm like, yo, I was, I was after you telling me like to showcase the brands in every single video. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, why don't I just go with Dead by Five? And I know that they just got some fresh pieces from them. So I just hit them. I'm like, yo, hey, like, I know we just met, but like. I know you, you just got. <laughs> like, yo, you, you, are you free in like an hour? And he was like, uh, let me see what I can do. Me and my brother will be there. And like, they came. So then like my literal next video, we introduced it. And I was like, yo, this video is going to be too tough. So we made it a two-part mix. So your brother ended up w walking too. Yeah, he's like a six four, beautiful version of me type shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's a yeah, hooper we, athlete. The way that six we intro him was as the artist and the athlete because his brother plays basketball. So we literally That's intro them by right, creating right. lane to start showcasing that everything that I did was there's no competition if we're all in different yeah, lanes. Yeah. We're still trying to bring the community. And what's together. shout out to the to the brother? What's your brother's name? Uh, Scrap. A lot of people know him by Val as well. All right, yeah. shout out to Scrap. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's what's up. So when when it came to actually the models that were chosen, mm -hmm. when it came to them getting to the selected point, getting to the, the major event, the culminating event, what what controlled 
the brands they walked in? Like, what was the deciding piece of that? Was that just kind of arbitrary, or did the models get to pick what they wanted to walk in? Or? So I think this is where it kind of got a little tricky because, you know, you... you Cause I imagine the, the models have their own taste or preference. Yeah, and it was, and People it was that they know, brands. They know. Having to pick which models, like some of them are friends, some of them have all walked together before, yeah, some of them have walked yeah, in other yeah. shows. And it's like, I wanted to give people like that range. Okay, you've never been in a fashion show. Okay, you have a lot of fashion experience. Some had more than me. I personally have only been in three fashion shows, and that's including my own. Yeah. So, but for some of them, they've been in five, six, seven. Yeah. So when I was going down that line, we ended up having like almost 80 people audition for the show. Then I had like 30 people on Instagram, like sending me audios, like videos of them walking. So it was like a really hard selection process wow. for us to come out with 80 models in the show. Because we had about 10 to 15 per brand, and we had eight brands in the show. Wow. So trying to have that process and not think, okay, well, maybe I'll just maybe pick 20 models and have them do quick changes, right? And, like, how do I want this show to go? Yeah. Because now trying to figure out who's aesthetic or who's going to be chosen. So I did let in some of the designers, let them, like, pick their first five, and then I assigned the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So that way it was, like, a fair trade. So they got to pick, like, an, a semi-all-star slash semi-new cast, you know? And giving everybody a chance to be selected. But dig it, dig it. That was definitely hard. Like, shout out to all the ones that, you know, weren't even picked, but, like, they still gave their all. Some of them even still came to the show after not being picked, which, like, yeah. for me to see that was is, like, yo, I would give you first draft next year because, like, yeah, I took yeah. a mental note of the support that they gave even after not being in the show. You know what I mean? That's fire, bro. So, you know, that's a, a good segue to, you know, how I wanted really us to, to you know, start the recap you know, discussion is really starting from its infancy, like when it was just a baby idea in your head. You know, there was no promo. There was no Instagram post. Mm -hmm. You was just minding your business at the boutique one day. <laughs> and you just suddenly got this epiphany. Like, you know what? What if I... You know, it's, it's... Bam. Like... It, it really crazy. was like a bam moment because it didn't make sense. Like, I think I blame Instagram for <laughs> misinterpreting <laughs> my bad spelling <laughs> in a post. Because, like, it partially started as an idea, but, like, my original concept was like, I wanted to do something big for my 24th birthday. And I was like, you know, like, maybe I'll throw a, a fashion show-themed birthday party. Like, you know how people do sneaker galas. But I'm like, yo, every yeah, time yeah, they yeah. do that, they always mess it up. Like, they always throw on sneakers or, like, the wild outfit. And it's like, yo, you're... You can't wear that with a suit. Like it's when they say sneaker gala, like get some Dior's, do something, you know, do something different. And it's like I was, I don't want to do that this year. So when I posted it, but like I said, who would come if I had a fashion show themed birthday party? Mm -hmm. But everybody thought it was a fashion show. I, like, I want to walk. I want to be in it. And I'm like, I right, like we we 300 votes deep, <laughs> like and like halfway through the day, I'm like, ah, oh, we're at like 120. They, they probably just all want to come support. But then I'm like, the number is just still going. I never get that many taps wow. on the story when it's just something casual. I'm joking about. You know, like, I've gotten views on a lot of things, but, like, stuff like that, I'm like, oh, So damn. the people was like, bro, we need to have this, this fashion show. And I'm show. like, bro, I can't, like, not do it. So now, like, We need this fashion post. show, bro. Just, I tried to, like, dumb me out of it. I was like, yo, let me just make a second post and say, okay, if I do a fashion show, like, who'd, like, actually be in it? And then, like, they, the numbers was, like, almost the same. It was, like, like 120 at that point. And I'm like, all right, so let me, let me just do it. So I, I went around, and my boy, Nuke, he had just thrown a party at the Omni. So I'm like, yo, like, that's a big enough venue. And in my head, I'm like, why would I jump to the Omni? Like, I've never even hosted a birthday dinner with more than 10 people. Now I want to back out the Omni. He said, yo, let me just go to the big league, man. Let me get the <laughs> Omni. You know what I mean? Like, all I remember was thinking that if I wanted to include the entire city, I didn't want people to struggle with parking, traveling, because I have a high church audience. So I didn't want, like, half yeah, of the, yeah, yeah. the older generation to have to struggle trying to Because they got a whole garage. Yeah, so I'm like, they have their own things. So like, and half the early birds are the older birds. So I'm like, if they come early, they're going to get parking. You know, like the younger yep. ones could walk to Temple. Yep. And then if we do something after, you don't have to go far. You know, yep. so I was just thinking convenience. And then it's like the number is starting to rise. And I'm like, yo, like, these are big boy expenses. Like, do I really want to do this? And I was like, all right, like, you know what? Like, where it says you can do anything you want, like, you know, Bro, with him. So I'm like, all right, fire. I'm going to pray on it. Stand. I looked at my mother. I said, we doing this? And she didn't tell me no. So she supported it from the beginning she of the tell journey. She didn't tell you no. So, <laughs> I mean, this was this was a, a a big feat though, um, not just in its idea, but like 
financially, um, logistically, right? Like having to arrange different people and entities, you know, having to work together in tandem, you know. Um, you've never put together a fashion show before, right? No, I've never. Okay. I've, so this is not just like, yeah. this is not like, just to kind of give the listeners like context, this is not like, hey, I'm into fashion. My name is Jaden. I do fashion shows all the time. And you know what? It happens to be my birthday. So you know what? It would be cool if I just do what I always do, these fashion shows, and then just make a birthday out of it. Like, no, like you actually had never put together a fashion show. So so just for you to do that, let's just say that alone. Let's say it wasn't even your birthday. For you to just say, hey, I want to just try to put together a small fashion show for, for once, just the first time. That would have been what most people would have saw as like the natural evolution of like an idea like that. Mm -hmm. But out the gate, you go, you know what? My first time doing this is going to be this big. And the sheer gall and audacity of you to think that you could do something this big for the first time and think it's going to be successful. You have some nerve, sir. <laughs> and voila. He's not normal. He's he different. You know what I'm saying? He's not normal. And it's I mean as 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 bright lights and as extravagant and as unbelievable of a feat it was to most people, he don't relate to us saying that. Because that's how it was supposed to be in his head. So if you're blessed enough how we were speaking even before we was on camera yeah, yeah, yeah. about like the, you know, seeing your visions for what they are and as extravagant as they are, if you have a chance to really like Really put that, if you have the finances, if you have the people that's backing you to really do that, then take your chance. And you got no fear in that. So you're not, he's not normal, so he's not going to see it the same way most people are seeing it. You different, bro. Type shit. You different. Yeah. The nerve of you. I appreciate you for that. That real one. Yo, that's, that's, that's really what like I want you to share with us, man. Just that process, each step of the way, rolling it out. So I know I followed a lot of the social media promo along the journey. I saw now, you know, you had our boy Blue, you know, you had him come on the scene. He big fashion guy. dude. Yeah. So what was that like? Like you looking for now, it, it, from the outside looking in, I don't know if this is, it was exactly what it was, but from the outside looking in, you kind of had someone else come along the way with you to do the whole chosen segment. Like looking, kind of, you know, uh, vetting other people in the fashion space. Is that is that kind of what was happening? Like he was kind of giving you insight onto that, or helping you not, identify not really. people. What was, or I was it just honestly, for like the camera? It was like a dope theatrical yeah, it was piece. Like, uh, his his role in that was, I wanted him to be like the the Nick Fury, like the fashion industry kind of thing. <laughs> so like, I, I feel like that was that's like dope. The, the idea that I wanted you was to putting together out. a movie in your head. Yeah, like in my head, like I wanted ten episodes. Like, but if realistically, <laughs> like for the next one, you're, you're about to do ten of these zombies. Like, real talk. Like, yo, like so, and, and it's crazy because like I'm looking at it now, and I'm like, yo, if I was to do this how I wanted to, I wanted to spread it out. Like the reason why, like I feel like my videos, like they were good, but they weren't as long as I wanted them, as scripted as I yeah, wanted yeah. them. And it's like I was coming up with the lines, like the day of making the video, doing stuff, prepping it, calling people to have them in there, because I was trying to direct the entire thing. So I had like a little bit of help along the side. Like I had like Alex, I had Danny, like or even Polo, like the like videographer. Yeah, yeah. We'd be just spitting ideas off each other, like as I would have the concept, and we'd like kind of tweak little things here and there. But it's like even in that process, it's like I really wanted to just showcase so many more things that I think the now knowing how overwhelming it can be to go through orchestrating like an entire thing. It's like you know even that that little triangle that's hit at like minute 15 in the middle of like that operatic moment, mm -hmm. like that, that has to be done, you know? And those are things that like, if you have that idea, no matter how small it is, like zoom in and get it done. So if you need more time, just make sure you allot for that. I think that that was probably the only thing that I think I wish I had more of was a little bit more time and not even for the event, but just for the promotion. 
what was it like for, did you have to navigate any emotional or mental experience along the way of feeling like I should, I should, I should dial it back or I should, you know what, it's still not too late for me to just drop this idea. Like, did that ever occur? Did the thought ever cross your mind? Like, you know what, this is just, it's really kind of getting out of hand bigger than what I thought. I should just. <laughs> I think that it wasn't that I necessarily. Like the cold feet kind of phenomena. I feel like in moments like that, it's like for me that when I, when I feel like I have cold feet, it's like I want to ice skate. Like, it's like. Like it's like okay, like I'm on thin ice. I might as well this just keep dude. Going. That was crazy. I try to tell you, bro. Different. Let me nah, find bro. out. This dude got bars. And he said, but "When I got cold feet, I feel like I want to ice skate." For real, because it's like I. I That's saw the viral expenses. clip right there, yo. I, 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 I called it. Just know. Hold on. I want to let the audience know. I called it right now, right on the show. That bar right there is the viral TikTok right now. <laughs> I wanted that's a t-shirt. I called it. I'm right. I'm 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 doing the graphic design for the T. Don't let nobody else do it. I'm doing it, yo. Continue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's love. That's love. Um only because it's like it did get to that point, right? You know, like I think when we have first like September, right? I was going through the promotion. I'm like, I'm like almost two grand in just paying and like for videos, promotion, like even venue spaces for the people to come audition. Um, and I like think that that was probably like the, I did get a little cold feet, you know, like especially in the beginning, again in the middle. And I think that um, it was probably a little bit harder because I'm hard headed naturally. Um, and when I started seeing like expenses build and stuff like that, it's like, okay, like I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, so like, I don't have to have as fancy of a venue. Like, you know, I hadn't fully like locked in, locked in yet. And I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm already at this number right here a couple grand down and that's just trying to pick a place for people to come audition so i don't even have any like models selected yet and i'm already like expensed out just looking at how wide it's going to be and i'm like yo and then the venue i'm like all right boom so i was like you know what i think i had the idea and set the time for the event i had put my like i signed the contract and everything like that and like my first bill for the omni wasn't for like 25 days right and i was looking at it and i was like okay so now I got to get my models. And when I realized. And the first bill was like how much? Two grand. So and I, was so I got like, 25 days. Come up with two grand. And it was crazy because I think I spent more than two grand in just the first and second promo videos for the event. And then the venue of where we had our first casting call. And then all the stuff that was needed for just tablecloths and materials. I think yeah. I was already at my first deposit for the venue space before I had even casted one model. So, and it was all just a, like, when I had the idea and said I wanted to throw a fashion show, I literally had just gone through some of the brands that I was already cool yeah, with, yeah. texted them, said, yo, would you be in my show? And they were like, yeah. And it was like, nothing written. It was just like, yo, like, off the strength of our yeah. relationship, could you do me this favor and be in my show? So, and say, would you, or, or any of the models, were, were you, like, like compensated or was anybody paid to be models? No? Nah, experience was enough for me, brother. I, I, money, like, as much as, as much as people, people won't even know what to do with the money they're supposed to be paid for like that, much yeah. less the experience of it. So, yeah. that's never a thought. Got you. It's never a thought. Yeah, okay. So, and I think at that point, it was like, I was looking at, like, everybody else. I'm like, yo, hey, mom, like, can we just sit down, write down what we got to do? And she was like, my mom was like, on it. She's like, all right, what expenses do you have this week? I'm like, Ma, I really don't even want to think about that right now. Like, I got this to do. I got that to do. Yo, I got a video in 20 minutes, Ma. I got to go. I'm sorry. So, and it was like little stuff like that. It's like I'm looking at everything full scale. And these are all these expenses. You was like having to foot them yourself? Like, yeah, did you so, have any sponsors, September people helping you? September was probably like the, the scariest because I don't think I had any sponsors. Like, I had one that like I was trying to get who was like a bigger sponsor, but it ended up falling through. So, even at that point, it was like, okay, you lost like your biggest sponsor. So, are you going to scale back? And then at that point, it was like the expenses were just going, 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 going. And I want to make sure, like, again, the listeners really catch the, the gravity of what, as you're talking about the expenses, really. Because, again, you know how a, a misconception with people who just naturally look fly, you know, mm -hmm. who, who do the fly thing that you do. <laughs> we're not even you talking know what I mean? about what I had to spend on my No, face. I'm saying, <laughs> but what I want to get at is, like, the misconception could be, like, like, all of the thousands of dollars that, it required for you to make that event what it was 
you know, for somebody who looked like you, dressed like you, present like you, it was it was probably just like haircut money. Like it was it was no real sacrifice involved. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I I I love when like people who are because the majority of our our listeners are people who are creatives and entrepreneurs themselves trying mm-hmm. to like have like regular just nine to five like most people and try to do their creative thing on the side mm-hmm. and you know pay their bills like they got every day and then on the side take a little money that they got left over to get studio time to make music or take that little bit of money to you know write their book paint podcast whatever it is i want people to know like you you one being a young man you got this 23 year old dude you not some millionaire um, but you are put it. Meanwhile, you you do got your own regular month to month bills, right? Like separate from this event. Somehow you are not only like coming up with the money, like little here, little there, but you're betting on yourself in this huge, crazy way. Like it's not like how most people birthday party because it's your birthday. The party is something that's usually footed for you. Like mm-hmm. you just gotta show up. Mm-hmm. Hey, just just come. Yeah. Like Jaden, we're gonna surprise you. Just just show up here this day. <laughs> you you are doing this big thing that is supposed to celebrate it's in celebration of you, this big vision, but it requires this sacrifice that's very real. Like again, like people ain't out here balling out of control. Like this ain't just like chump change. This is costing you real money. Like in a crazy way, that wasn't like rattling the heck out of you. Like, oh, I, I, I forgot. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me say it this time. You got cold feet. I skate out here. No. <laughs> hey, that's yo. I think that, say. Nah, you ain't telling no lie, man. I mean, that that's 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 the other half that look, people say don't do get. Say through music. I already know he know about the, the the sacrifice pouring money into yourself, yo. Studio time not cheap. Which is why I respect him so much and know and know that he's one of the ones that's gonna stay in it. Because like I'm saying, Different. to make it look like it was chump change, and these are bills that would stress most people to the point where they don't have no yeah, hair no more. Bro. Like, <laughs> bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro. Kofi Hill. Kofi hit the different ones a little bit different, man. That's all. I think the the main thing that even all money aside, because like I think that the gravity of money is like okay, like anything can be put on a credit card, right? As long as you had a high enough limit, right? And I think that everybody wants to think that when it comes to money, it's either big if you pay it in cash or it's a decent decision you put it in credit. But all that aside, it's like the support of where it comes from. Um. When hosting an event, you really realize that money is not really important until you need it from your true friends. And I think that in that space, it's like you understand, like, okay, you might not be able to get the ticket right now, right? But when I was working the event, it's like you, you send it out. I, I sent it to almost a thousand people in my contacts alone, like copy and paste, run down the list, yep. right? And then when you see that only 10 people got a ticket in 20 days, and then you're like, you know what? Fine. How much was the ticket? Tickets at that point, like VIPs is like seventy five, regulars was fifty, and then the standing ones was thirty five. And then at that point, I look okay. back, I raised the VIPs to a hundred, and then told everybody that I only. So these had, was reasonable prices. These wasn't crazy. Yeah, reasonable. Pro- I yeah, paid yeah. two hundred dollars to go yeah, to a yeah. fashion show that had nothing in it. Yeah. <laughs> like just because I was interested, so I understand yeah, that yeah. everybody's interests are the same. So I didn't yeah. even bump it that high. Makes sense. And. At the at the scale of things, it's like okay, I lowered the prices. After I told everybody I only had thirty on the VIPs, I said I'll lower it from a hundred to seventy five, just to see if the the mental note of like marketing yeah, is like okay. Yeah. If you think you're saving money, will you buy it? And it was the same price that I had it at, just yeah. to go and show they didn't even check the link that I sent them the first time. Yeah. So then my VIP sold out, and then that kind of paid me back for what I had just spent in the month of September for that first two grand, and I was cool. Yes. Right. But then I didn't sell almost another like bulk of tickets until the end of November. So I sat at almost 50 tickets sold all the way until I got to maybe like 80, 80 90 tickets. And that was the end of October. Yeah. So my event coordinator, we had the room set one way. And we were like, all right, we're going to cut the whole thing in half, have the divider down. We only got like 100 people. Let's make this a movie. Yeah. You know, when I was like, you know, honestly, like, but I'm like, yo, it's so when the event, at the at arrival of the event, how many tickets sold at, by the end of the whole thing? 
<laughs> Hold on. So you went from having only 50 tickets. Because I had about three. And then the buzzer beater came and like 300 more heads. Yeah, I had about 360. I had about like 12 photographers like in and out the spot. A whole bunch of Yo, hands. This is what I mean, bro, too. When I try to explain to people, like. A lot of times, like when we trying to be entrepreneurs, small business owners, creatives, like when we trying to do a great thing, um, we 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 don't realize that when you simply take those steps towards doing the great thing. It's almost like a magnet effect like happens. Like greatness has a way of finding you in return, but you must stay the course. So you could have got to the point where you had just only sold 50 and was like, yo, looking at this and looking at how much time is left before this event starts. It's probably not. It kind of reminds me of the stories where you hear um, about how when, you know, Back in our country, you know, decades ago when we had the gold rush and they talk about like this story, a bunch of like public speakers have said this story, like, you know, to like motivate people um, about how like the person digging for gold, digging for a long time and then they stop because they don't find no gold and they leave and then somebody come right behind them and dig just a little bit further and they find the gold because they was only like a, a foot away. If they had kept going, they would have hit gold. Mm -hmm. So again, like with you, like you could have, you went really far and you only got a little bit of time left before the event is here. And you only got 50, 50 tickets sold. That's it. If you had stopped right there and said, yo, yeah, I think that last. Mine, it looked like, you know what? We, it's probably not going to matter. I done sent this to a thousand people in the contacts, man. Yeah, I, her I got, out. listen, let's just, let's just round the numbers off to make it like easy. Like, let's say if you actually literally sent it to a thousand people mm -hmm. and then you literally only had 20 people respond. How many no's is that? That's 980 90, no's. Yeah. So most people would have been like, dang, you, been, you just got hit with 980 no's, homeboy. Like, this is a sign. Like, right? <laughs> like, people be taking no's like that, bro. Stuff as signs, like heavenly divine signs. Like, yo, see, this is why. See, I knew I shouldn't even have tried, man. Like, ain't nobody show up. When I tell people, like, I've literally have, like, performed my soul out i don't know to what degree like say do the like performance stuff or like with his music but like you you've seen me in the infant stages when i first started to do music or st first started doing the spoken word i was i was in rooms before you wasn't in none of these rooms but i've performed my heart out Jaden, to the point my voice almost sore with five people in the room three of them my family you know what I mean? Mm. Two of them, my kids. One is my cousin. And when and when I've done that, when I've when I've done and 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 and, and dared to be excellent, excellence has found a way of finding me back in return. For those who don't stop going, for those who don't throw their hands up and go, man, forget this, and keep going. And because you di didn't say forget this, fifty tickets turned into four hundred tickets somehow. And he has a lot of freedom to do so because, and I, whoever's watching this, I really want you to, you know, hone in on the fact that everyone in this room is doing their creative ventures independently. Let's say, for instance, Jaden is hired by Rock Nation or Live Nation to do something like that. 50 tickets, or like if we could scale it to the conscious that they do 50 tickets when you're supposed to pack the room out with 500 two weeks, a month before, they're calling it. Oh, they all, all day. They canceling that. But the power of being an independent is you can really bet on yourself until the last second. Sometimes most people don't even That's get the bar. shot to hit the buzzer, bro. That's a bar. They're not even in the game. They, they got a coach that could take them out if they're not doing too well. Like Being independent. Because most people look at the, even the word independent like a dirty word. Like yeah. that's something to hate. Like don't be independent, man. You, you know what I mean? You got to get a record label or you want to get signed or whatever. But it's like the point you just made, that's the beautiful silver lining. It's very liberating. Of being independent yeah. is I get to go up to the very last second. Ain't nobody calling this except me. 
So when I get tired, when I get winded and exhausted from digging, then I, I, I control my destiny. I right. get to say, you know what? I wanted to call it quits. And then you got, you got nobody to blame or credit but you. Yeah, so, it's time. <laughs> bro, that's fire, man. So you, so you had, you had blue. We talked about like how blue came along and really it was like this dope kind of like, you know, theatrical element. I thought that was fire, by the way. <laughs> when you started got, doing those videos, yeah. that was fire. Um, having just a person with you was fire. So that that person really could have been anybody, but I think mm -hmm. it was an added layer of of dopeness because of cuz I need, at least knew who it was. Yeah, it was I don't know if a lot of your audience too. didn't know who that was, but yeah. you know what I mean, because we knew who that person was. You talking about Unk? Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 but his his role too like um sorry to cut you off. Like yeah, his, yeah. his role was it was mainly because in that space like he's always supported me in like a fashion space like blue like backstory yeah, yeah, he goes yeah. to my church he's a deacon yeah um i lead praise and worship at the church and that's like where i thrive that's where i like i love to be you know and i think that my comfort in having him and bringing him from where me and him were in the church where he knew me as a like as the church kid like being safe enough to say like yo i want you to come follow me on this journey and be next to me yeah wasn't yeah, even yeah. just because like you know, you, there's a, there's a level of you have to not be afraid of for what he would see. You know, like if he only looks at you as a church person, yeah, ninety five percent yeah. of the people who say that they really do love God, they don't really yeah. show that when they walk outside the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I had to be comfortable knowing that he'd be with me, but I also needed him there because I knew that I would need him to pray for me. But it's easier if he can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. So on the days that I did feel like I was yeah. stressed out, he knew what to pray for. He knew how to motivate and stuff like that. So yeah. even though I was doing most of the work, it's like it wasn't. Like, I felt like, like, just because my hands held the bags, like, doesn't mean that my arms weren't being lifted on the back end. You feel me? Yeah. Just like when you got, you know, when you're in the gym, you got a spotter. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, on, in the front, you can't see, at least if a spotter is spotting you on the bench properly, mm -hmm. you can't see that the, the spotter got the hands right under the elbow. You know what I mean? Like, let, let me just lightly get the elbow at least. You know, you, you, you got it. You got it from here. Like, having that encouragement, man, I know had to be key, you know, especially if mom mom dukes was there you know she, you know, was, she was there making the whole sure time. making sure she wasn't letting you you know quit and give up on yourself so that was dope now so now we get to you know we get to the time where like we're closer at the event man you got the you got the miraculous tickets and sold man um this really big you know extravagant idea looks like the thing you saw in your head is now clear like it's coming together in front of you right before your eyes it's the night before. You laying on your bed. I ain't sleep. You staring up at the <laughs> goddamn ceiling. I was on the couch. <laughs> this dude said I didn't even make it to the bed. Yo, free. I was on the couch on the free, laptop. Free, I was on the sofa. What was the night before like for you? It was, so the the day before I was working, I worked the whole day. So okay. I worked the whole day out in Westport. I left the boutique. On my way home, that's an hour ride. I got caught in traffic. And I'm like, all right, what do I have to, have to, have to, have to do? Right? Because I had a dress rehearsal, too. So it's like, all right, what am I about to do? The day I, before you had the dress rehearsal. Yeah. Okay. So I had the dress rehearsal. So I'm like, yo, I'm not going in there by myself. I need somebody who could DJ it. So I said, yo, I, I asked Say, I said, yo, I'm, I'm coming to get you today because I'm like, yo. You needed somebody to DJ the dress rehearsal. Yeah. So okay. I'm like, yo, because my DJ was booked. Like, my actual, actual DJ was booked. So I'm okay. like, all right, boom. And there was already issues with that stuff too. Like it was like, all right, one DJ like fell off. So I had to like find, like my DJ had to find me somebody else to DJ. So it's just like the week of, it was like everything that you could think could go this wrong. Stuff, like, yo, this is issues. what happens, bro. Yo, like, like I'm at, I'm at the dress rehearsal and my mom had to leave to go handle a, a family situation. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, yo, ma, I got a hundred questions. I'm walking up. I'm like, yo, what's good with you? She like, just give me a second. I'm like, you gotta go. You just. Handle what you got to handle. I'll take care of it. Turned around, wow. not knowing how I was going to take care of it, but I just didn't want her to see. I didn't know what the heck I was about to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And I walk back in the room, and it's like all these people just sitting in chairs waiting to start the dress rehearsal. In my head, I'm like, yo, like this was the jacket that I was like debuting. This is my new jacket that nice. me and my manufacturer, like Sax, my brother, was like working on for the longest. Like, shout out Brent. Like, you know, like, we've been working on this for the longest. What's this say? Right here? That's, oh, that's the Style, style by Striz. And then this is the double S for Style Striz, and it's over God's Timing. So the name of the jacket is called God's Timing. Love it. Because my entire embodiment of this process was that I didn't get through this by myself. I did it on God's Timing, um, which came through during the pandemic. Facts. But 
it was like I'm looking. I'm like, yo, I don't know what the heck I'm about to do. Everybody's asking me, yo, are we starting here? You want them to walk here? You want them to try on this? You want them to try on that? I look at my phone. And it's like three designers saying, hey, I'm running late. Hey, I'm running late. And I'm like, yo, all these questions in front of me mean nothing. So I'm like, you know what? Wow. Just have them line up. I'll deal with that later. And it's like just then the the event people who are trying to figure out how I want the room shape. They're like, hey, we got the stage here, but there's no chairs. So how do you want the chairs? You want more on this side, that side? And it's like just a a moment of just crazy questions and like, yo, what, what do I answer first? So I just chose nothing. <laughs> I answered nothing. I walked in the room confidently in my big boots. I hopped right in the line with the rest of them. And I started, you know, stomping in my big boots, like jokingly to like lighten the room up. And then was like, yeah, guys, you about to start walking and like just ran through. I had nothing in my head. Like You would think that I had it on paper. I just, we're just going to do this. We're going to run with it. I looked at him. I said, yo, bro, play something lit. And then when they started walking and they started, like, practicing and having fun, I walked out the room. Like, the photographer sent me pictures of them at the dress rehearsal. I ain't seen none of that happen because I walked out the room. Excuse me. <laughs> and then after that, I went to the studio with Brent to, to try and finish all of our designs for the show the next day. And then I'm like, all right, boom. So I finished that. Now I got to go home. I got to So do what this. time is it roughly about that time? By the time I – I think I pulled up on him at, like, midnight because I went out to eat afterwards – with my laptop. So what time did you get home? Like 3 a.m. that night. You so, got home 3 a.m. the day of the event. Yeah. So I left him, I think, at like midnight. I only went to him for like maybe like a half hour real quick, like quick little talk. And no, actually the night before that, I was with him for hours. But the night like prior yeah. to the show, I was only with him for like a hot second because we had the dress rehearsal, all this stuff to figure out. Like he had popped through the dress rehearsal and he, and he had to step yeah. out. And then... I was literally we went out to eat afterwards after the dress rehearsal. Like, all right, guys, like tomorrow's the day. I'm sitting there, like, oh shoot, some of the models left. I ain't get to tell anybody like how I want they they stuff done. So I'm at the table in Geronimo's with my laptop in front of me, phone in front of me, and I'm texting 80 models, like copy and paste, copy and paste, da -da 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 -da. just texting everybody at the table. Then I'm like, oh, let me add this person. Let me let me text this designer right quick. Let me call him real quick. So I'm sitting at the table. They all eating, chilling. I have my food in front of me. I took two fries, put them in a the box. Skating. Then I had to go home, make my VIP bags, put all the stuff So there. when you get home, it's like 3 a.m. Because mm -hmm. I'm still stuck on this 3 a.m. part. I, I sat in the car for like a good hour from like 2 to 3. So, I, so it's 3 a.m., you get in the house. Mom's asleep. What, what, what time do you go to sleep? What time do you close your eyes? I think I went to bed that night at like 3.30. It's not that night. Stop saying that. It's the next day. Okay, that, that same day, that morning. The morning of the event, you went to sleep about when? Like 3.00. For like a hot second, because I I did the VIP bags. I do because I know when the, 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 the when the event is here today. I know you get, got up early. I had a haircut, so I had to I had to handle that one, <laughs> bro. So I woke up, washed my hair, ran out for the haircut, and then for like a good thirty minutes, the only piece I think I had was when I was trying to catch that selfie of me in the haircut. Because then after that, once I started driving again, it was like my day was. I had to pick up my pants from Deuce. Um, cause he was him and my Rick Owens pants. They were too big. Um, I had to go to Brent spot to go pick up this jacket. Then I had to shoot over to the hotel to open my hotel room and put all my sponsor stuff in. And then I had to go back to my grandma's, grab the lemonades, the Gorilla Lemonade sponsored. Big shout out to mm -hmm. Gorilla Lemonade. Um, then I had to shoot back to my house, which is 25 minutes from my grandmother's house on like a, a that downtown traffic. Day. It's like four o'clock. Yeah. I'm supposed to be, I told the models to be there at five. So now I'm running huh. around the world. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, where I tell everybody to be there at five. I'm just now leaving my grandma's house to go to back to my crib to grab my clothes. I'm like, all right, I'm not dressed. So then my videographer's like, all right, I'll be there at five. And we're supposed to shoot a video. We're supposed to shoot the last episode at the, the, at the, day at of the, the venue. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Because I wanted like a before moment and then I wanted like an oh, after. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, excuse me. So we go in to my house. I grab my stuff. Um, I shoot over to the Omni. I'm late. You know, fashionably late, of course. Um, of course. I pull up to my room. Thank God one of my models told me the day before he had a room. So I knew he was going to be there early. So I called him. I said, yo, bro, meet me in the basement. I need you to carry these lemonades up to my room real quick. And I'm in, like, fit number one. Like, not even the fit I was wearing to the show. So now I'm like, yo, people are starting to trickle in because it's getting close to, like, 630, 645 yeah. now. And I look like a regular. <laughs> like, I'm sitting here. And this random can't be out here looking outfit. regular. Yo, because the whole day I had a trench coat, everything. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to the Omni just to put something on real quick. Let me just throw on a quick little hoodie, jacket. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, ain't nobody going to see me. 
But then I started working and getting bombarded with questions. Like, they got tables in the wrong spot, like, where the cameraman's supposed to be at. So I'm like, yo, can you fix that? Actually, this model's here. This, 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 this is just too much. So I'm like, all right, I got to put on my cardigan. <laughs> I'm going upstairs to change my clothes just to mentally refresh. Um, <clears throat> I did that. I came back downstairs, and even though I had, like, 15 tasks, I was like, let me maybe if I just talk to the people, I'll forget about them tasks. Hopefully somebody will figure them up. You know, like, I'm like, all right, this got to see it through. But I mean, I got to see it through. <laughs> somebody here know what they're doing. Um, and then that was, like, showtime prep because now it's, like, 7.15 when I came back down. And it was, we had 80 models about, ticket-wise, we sold more tickets than who actually checked in. So I think at the end of the night, it was, like, 360 that checked in, not including the 80 models and the staff and stuff like that. So it was, like, a plethora of people there already, like, including the event staff themselves, like, passing around food, stuff like that. So I walked in. Yeah. I thought about a meatball. <laughs> Did I eat that day? No. No, nah, I never eat the day of a, of a, of a show, man. Should have told me that I would have had an extra steak and cheese the day before. I was nah. not ready for that. Shout out to the women too that was um that was behind the scenes, like kind of helping on that dress for her. So they like the Sheridan and yeah, Bree like the and Sheridan, the Bree, Alex, the Alex, like and all of them. Shout out to them girls. Did an amazing job. Like it was like it was like she she put her heart in it, like as if it was one of her events. Like and of course, like there were other big names too. Like you know, yeah. like there's Janaea, there's uh, there's my mother. Then there were like other people around uh, who like helped out, like Deuce. Like, and then Alex, like, she was in all the videos, too. Like, she was with me. Like, you know, like, and yeah. these are all people, like, half of which, like, Alex, I think I met before the first video. Like, after the fashion show was done, I went to go talk to Deuce, and she just happened to be in the studio and said, yo, what you're doing is cool. Let's lock in. I said, I bet. I got a video tomorrow. Are you pulling up? <laughs> wow. And it was just like, all right, cool. So we just all working in our own free-flowing spaces but like even being in our yeah. own lanes like it's still the same highway so you know like you, we can still yep. coexist and then even like brie like the day before like me and brie she's a stylist that i was like cool with like almost a year ago and i think that week we reconnected to talk about the fashion show because i just wanted her to come and watch so that way for 2024 i'm like we could lock in we could all do business together and i'm like yeah yeah just pop through and she was like hey but do you need any help though i know what that's like I said, I mean, the dress rehearsals only is tonight, so if you you want to pull up, I'm not saying no. And like she pulled up, and w I didn't even have to give her a task; I wasn't there. And it's mad funny because like the day of the show, she's helping out behind the scenes doing mad stuff. And then like I blinked twice, I put on my jacket, and she's going out because she's wearing Dead by Five, so now she's in the show. So I'm just sitting here looking like yo, switching hats like a mud. Shout out, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, bro. I'm just looking. I'm like yo. But that's what I mean by when I say excellence has a way of finding you. Yeah. yeah. Like, because cause you're doing your excellent thing and you don't really got the whole piece of the puzzle. Like, you don't know everything. But as you stay faithful and diligent and persevering, taking more steps towards you being excellent, other excellent people around, that's why I call it like, it's like a magnet effect. Other excellent yeah. people start to notice Oh, oh, you excellent like me. Oh, oh, you right. you determined like me. You're let me ones, let right, me help right, you. Right. Cuz that's that's a common thing amongst excellent people is because we it could be something that's so rare when we do come across another excellent person or entity we 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 like to connect for it like and, and you ain't got to pay us nothing. Nah, yeah. Off yeah, the yeah, time yeah, it's like, yeah. yo, cuz they see the cuz you know what it's there. like yeah. to be to feel alone on your excellent journey. Mhm. Mm you know, so when you find somebody else trying to just be excellent, like you just trying to do your thing, bro. Like I see you. Right. Let me like, yo, just tell me how I can help. Like, you know what I mean? I don't even need nothing. Just let me, you know. So that's why I told you don't tell nobody else that price. That I mean, when you first came through, we was talking about like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, Neff, like send them through. Anybody yeah, else? Yeah, yeah. Even now, especially like I didn't think it is till talking to you on the show just now. But like, I'm like, even after it's been done for, you know, other models that you connected with, people that, you know, are taking it serious, like, you know, your event wasn't just something that they were just trying to do, you know, out of love for you, but, like, trying to actually, you know, persevere in their own way. Mm -hmm. Yo, still tell them, like, you know, to send them my like, way. Just, I, just to I be, like, you know, guests. Like, you know, yeah. if they got if they got a story of perseverance and journey just being an entrepreneur or creative, um, I always like talking with people like that. You know what I mean? So, because um, this is what I do. Yeah. You know, I do this excellent. So, um you know, some of them, like, they're, they're, I kid you not, like, 
that's that's how you know that God had to be involved because I think everybody in the room was an influencer in their own estate. Like, and it was crazy because, like, even though, like, we all live completely different lifestyles, like, I knew that we were, like, a family when, before the show, I had my doubts, too. Like, for a second, I'm like, all right, I'm just praying by myself, hope the show goes good. And I'm like, all right, like, something just kept pulling, like, for me to pray with everybody. So I'm like, all right, boom, we all prayed together. Yeah. And afterwards, it was, like, it's, it's so funny that I felt like, the fashion show, like, in itself was like the pandemic. It was, like, it was almost so sickening to see how many friends became of this event. Like, I'm looking at social media oh, and yeah, people yeah. who, like, I've never seen talk to each other. It's, like, they're tagging me in the post. So my notifications, like, I posted my own photo sick. and didn't know. see any of my own notifications because it was just, yo, <laughs> Matt, such and such Matt. commented on such and such. And I'm, like, yo, wait, they just told me last week they had never met. But now they commenting, like, oh, my yeah, brother, yeah, like, oh, I'm yeah. proud of you. I'm sitting here looking at, like, the... The trickle down motivation yeah, the effect. networking, and I'm just yo. Like, yo, this is this it's is excellence crazy. finding each other, yo. It's so beautiful, bro. It's like it's like when they show you in science class, um, visual pictures of like the brain synapses happening, like mm-hmm. and, the, and the neurons and all that. Yeah. Like talking, like that's what you you see it in real life with people. Like it's like yo, y'all all strangers. Like y'all don't even know each other. Like that's how it would be when I would like go and perform at the Apollo, mm-hmm. right? Like again, like, shout out to Apollo. You see, I put my my plaques up. My three, uh, the three times I performed there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Like, but like, yeah, like. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> but yo, it would be people you never even met before. You don't know these people, but you get backstage and you see people who are passionate about their instrument they play or their music, you know, they singing, whatever. And you know that all of you are on the same journey of just trying to be great and trying to look for the next opportunity. And there's something about that that commonality factor that stitch you together, like how mm-hmm. you were saying, that that effect like a family. Like now, it's like, like I had to, I remember probably my, my my most recent time, right before the pandemic that I performed there, I had like this like 60-year-old dude, like OG. He was like a, um, he was a singer. And he had a, he went ahead before me. I was right, I was in line to go right after him on stage. He went up before me, he had got booed, right? So the the process is 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 when you get booed, you go back downstairs, um, just past the curtain, back downstairs to the green room, and then the green room is where everybody else is waiting, and they watching on a on a TV, like waiting for their turn to like you know come up. So he come he come downstairs, and dude is like distraught, like like almost to tears, bro. And all I can, I can hear him mumbling under his breath. He like. Uh, I'll never do this again. Now, mind you, before the show started, we've been in the green room for like hours, like meeting each other, talking, like the director give you like all the rules and stuff. So he had told me a little bit about his journey. Like he been, he like 60 something years old. So he, he only been performing for like 30 plus years. He'd been doing this. Mm-hmm. So then for me to fast forward, see him come downstairs and now hear him mumbling under his breath, like how like he never going to do this again and all this I was like, yo, OG, you've been doing this for decades, bro. You gonna let this one, one bad, this time. one moment in history, like this one. Respectfully, though, it sucks that it took him thirty years to figure out that it wasn't for him, though. No, but it's not even like it not being for him. I'm, t- I was more on some type of time, like, like, yo, if that's your passion and you've been doing it for thirty years, that's what I'm saying. So, you, like, keep going, right? Don't let this thing rock you, right? And now, have you thinking, no, I can't do this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I see what you're saying. So you saying you like now he convinced himself it's not for me? Or were you me? doing it for 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 your own personal pleasure? And that's what I tell a lot of creatives. Yeah. Always keep that you're doing it for you at the forefront. Everything else, every every good compliment you get, every bad negative criticism you get, it needs to be thrown into the same place. And unfortunately, that's in the back and to keep yeah. going. So that's why I'm saying it's unfortunate it took 30 years for him to figure out yeah. that it took one note. I like that stop. point that you said, though, that you said whether it's a compliment or a criticism, right. let, it, let both of them go to the same place. Same Did place. you peep that? That's tough. Right? Because cause what happens is we let... The compliments come in because they're compliments, right? Mm-hmm. We think it's we think it's Gucci. We think that's that's okay right. to let the compliments go here, right? Because we like what's the what's the what's the harm in that? It's a compliment. Mm-hmm. The problem with that is once you get conditioned to let compliments go here, mm-hmm. you also let 
the criticisms go here. Exactly. And then now it's a problem. I feel like sometimes but if you twofold, well, peak game. But like how Say was saying, mm-hmm. if you put both of those things somewhere else, they really need to go behind you or to the side somewhere. Yeah. The, the the compliments and the criticism. Right. Because because really none of them should be going here. Right. That's the truth. That's the reality. Right. Mm-hmm. But the problem is you you let the good ones in here, soup your head up, and then now you can't stand, you can't you even get, take a negative. criticism now. Yeah. So what I love about individuals like yourself that I know, what I love about me and people like me is is I rather the good and the bad, I'm of no reputation. Let it all be be like unto God. Blame God for it all. Cause now, as long as I'm like I'm like guided by that reasoning, right? It's like, yo, if it's going good, if it's popping, yeah, you know, I appreciate you. Oh, thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you. All, all glory to God. I'm gonna give the praise to God. I get the criticism. I right, heard you. I right. again, not my me. I'm just I'm t- I'm taking the steps according to how I feel like I'm being led. You know what I mean by God to do that mm-hmm. again. So even if you feel like that was the wrong thing for me in your opinion or your opinion. Saying that you don't think you like how I did it this way. I forget your opinion or forget, you know, again, forget your opinion and forget the accolade. Mm -hmm. I got to forget both of them because they're distracting. Mm -hmm. They're going to distract me from being focused and persevering. Mm -hmm. And the problem is we just think the criticisms and the critique is what we should be, you know, uh, you know, worried about. You know what I mean? Sidestepping and avoiding that. No, you need to be also be worried about the 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 swollen your head up, the compliments. Cause the, again, like like they gotta both I just like there's no better way to say it than how say, you know, put it, yo. It's like at the end yeah. of the day, they both gotta go be put in the same place. Yeah. Put both of them joints in the backpack or put them both off to the side. You need to have your eyes, your attention only focused on the goal, the mission. That's it. Yeah. One hundred percent. Because like once you once you leave that like that, I really come back to the whole like staying in your lane thing. And it's like it's one thing for you to like you know you see that one car that could bob and weave as much as they want to, right? But it's like the the more you add to that car, it's not you can't always keep a Corvette if you want to keep bringing stuff with you. So like if you bring in that that stuff that you let in your ego, the stuff you let in your heart, and you fill the bad stuff in the mm-hmm. wrong places, now you don't went to a suburban. Now you got an eighteen wheeler, and you really can't move the same way because you have baggage you know and when you carry yeah, yeah. that as a creative it's like as much as we overthink naturally it's like the more you bring with you the more susceptible you are to yeah. an accident like, i like the crash. baggage it's, i like that baggage analogy that's probably better in connection with say was putting it like it, it whether it's the compliment or the criticism is all going to turn into baggage for you mm-hmm. And, and, and baggage is bad when you're trying to move. The the, the more baggage you got, because all it takes is one all, snag. You know, all it takes that's is, it, yo. That's and like, it. Even just when you're trying to go straight and you got, you know, you got your head on straight and you tunnel vision, like you know, trucks can't always get through every tunnel. You feel me? But bro, you can. You know what is a perfect like physical like uh, reality representation of that of that point is my first time battle rapping. I don't think you know you didn't come to that event. Yeah, I don't think I made it. To my that first one. battle rap, right? I'm standing on stage. It's the first time. First off, it's the first time I ever been like at, on a stage where the people was this close to me, mm-hmm. right? So usually other like venues or play, you know, the stage is kind of a little bit way distance it's between separate, seats. Yeah, yeah. In a battle rap, like you know, room or arena, like a lot of these joints is just rooms, like you know what I mean? Right. People right there, like I can stick my arm out and touch you. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of, you know, uncomfortable, but also because this was my first time doing this type of performance. Mm -hmm. Like I had, had, you know, you know, did spoken word performances before, like a poet. I've done that. This was a new animal. So that kind of had my nerves a little like, you know, shaky. So I'm in front of, I'm on stage. Start the round, my first round. And just just pointing to again Say's point about like the compliment and the criticism could both throw you off is I said some punchline and somebody in the crowd said, Oh, 
like I got a dope crowd reaction. Mm-hmm. And when that joint happened, my attention suddenly went right there and my brain went blank. Yep. For like a good five seconds, I was like, I'm like, come on, come on, free. Think, 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 think. Like, I'm like, I need that next line. <laughs> but it threw me off. Yeah. yeah. Just like how the, how the homie, the OG at the Apollo, him getting booed threw him off. But like, yo, whether it's a, a applause or getting booed, bro, they both could throw you off the focus. The point, the reason why I'm here on stage is to do a job, do this. Mm-hmm. Not to get drunk off the Kool-Aid, off the compliments or get drunk. Or, I got to stay sober minded with too. the mid- yeah. with the mission, bro. Yeah. You bro. can't be locked in with everybody with a key. <laughs> it ain't easy to. I don't think anyone's ever been just built like that to just throw. Because, I mean, as, so, as yeah. calm as I'm saying it now, it took me it's, like some time. It's easier to, said than done. Yeah, 100%. Because it, it's like, I mean, but then you start realizing, I mean, experience in any craft is going to be the teacher for you. So as soon as you start realizing, yo, why am I getting negative compliments from people who I thought would have been positive? Why am I getting positive compliments from strangers who I thought would yeah. never rock with me? That why, why do I even care? <laughs> it's from strangers. That you know part. what I mean? And then it just, it, it, it formulates and it evolves into, bro, like, I it don't matter. Like, it don't matter as long as I keep going. Yeah, that and then, part. And then you see that people are attracted to that mindset. Like, I have a lot of people hit, who, he has a lot of people who hit him for that mindset. Like, we piggyback off each other for that mindset. If he feeling down one day, he going to talk to me about that mindset. And you just yeah. got to be reminded of who you are. Like, Yeah, you got to, bro. Talk. It's an, auth- it's an uh, what's the word? Authenticity yep. type of thing. If it's for you, it's for yeah. you. Yeah. If it ain't for somebody, okay. I think that's even when I was talking before about the that whole the thousand people that I texted. Like, I, when you... When you look at those numbers and you scale back, and even at the end of the event, like mentally, that right there, if it weren't for the fact that I was okay with whoever came, because I just wanted to put on a fashion show and give everybody a platform, I could have taken that personal, like, yo, like, my own homies. Like, yeah, yeah. Ain't here. So, like, even the day of the show, like, you would think that that's just. Because I ain't make it. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Yeah, but you, you, I could make it. <laughs> I was doing a billion other stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm right in there. But that, again, that's the thing, too, man, is like, you know, it, it goes to consistency because you still you followed up. You're like, yo, so talk to me. What's up? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I definitely cared. But it's like, again, you know, what I have to even run myself, though, when I have a thing, right, that, you know, uh, you or somebody else, you know, my people I've don't, don't yeah, make it to right? missed a couple. Yeah. Right. Like, I have to also remind myself kind of the dope thing. Like we talked about the dopeness of like having like that network of people that are equally excellent. Mm hmm. The 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 the, the double edged sword to that. The flip side of that is, when that represents the majority of your network, like so, the majority of the people you that you rock with only are all people operating on an excellent level, like doing whatever they do in their own world. The problem with that could be when you do got something, they're busy being excellent. Yeah. Main character syndrome. Everybody's a main character in their own movie. I'm 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 busy being excellent right. somewhere else. Right. And, right. But here's but, but here's the here's the, here's the here's the beautiful mm-hmm. here's the beautiful part though of that too is though, is if how you said that word authenticity, if you know I'm an authentic person yeah, in your network, like you know I'm a real one. Yeah. So if so if you don't see me pull up, Jaden know it's cause I'm 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 you busy doing, doing valid, yeah. I'm doing the thing that he even want me to do. Right. That's the secret key right there. Do do the people in your circle want you still chasing your dreams, even if it means you can't they have be to there for them? Yours. Right, right, right. Because because if you doing your thing, if that's the reason why, oh yo, I missed you at the event, bro. Where was you? Yo, I was on tour, man. Or yo, I was modeling at this. Uh, yo, proud Thank of you. Thank God. Like, Keep doing yeah, it, bro. 100%. Like I'm. Cr- but don't 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 let me find out like you didn't pull up and you was playing video games on the PlayStation. Hey, like, bro, I'm gonna be 100 percent with you, bro. Like we we caught some people downtown, ready to buy shorties drinks. That's walking with five girls, walking with five dudes, walking with their entourage, not showing up to the show. I he he, I'll say it. And like, that's something totally different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like we we had the best of both, but I think yeah. that, truthfully, it's like and, and it's and it's still all love on my end. Yeah. But I think that what I definitely did learn is that. Um, in the space that I was in, I was comfortable with being there for other people to the extent that, you know, you're 
I'm moving so fast that I don't notice the fact that, you know, there's there's a lot of one sided communication. So some of it might hurt more. Like a lot of it hurt for me mentally yeah. when it was like, yo, I feel like I'm I'm in this space where you think you have a multi mass of friends that are here for you. But yeah, then the yeah. ones who really come through that have given more support for your dreams aspect, not just like your company, but the ones who really yeah. want you to thrive. There's a difference in that conversation and there's a difference in that and the significance of that friendship. And I think that that's something that I had to kind of get comfortable in because I have a lot of friends that I never looked at. I was making excuses for a lot of them too. Like it was like, oh, no, I ain't that serious. But like when you really come yeah. down to it, it's like, okay, like maybe I do got to pay attention to some stuff. Like, you know, and still pray for everybody. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's things that you ignore. And I think it's important too to like, you know, not just keep it a buck with yourself. Like when you, how you said you reflected later and was like, you know what, no, nah, that really was important. I think I was making excuses for them. Like, it's also important to, like, if it's somebody that you care to be this real with, like, if it's a, per a person that really matters to you, it's important to also communicate that to the people you call your friends when they don't show up in the way that you feel like, yo, you were you was capable to show up, you was available, and you didn't. Like, I want you to know, like, you know what I mean? Ain't no, ain't no love loss, but, like, I want you to know, like, real talk, like, that kind of disappointed me. Like, I really wanted, I expect you to show up. Instead... A lot of us as dudes do this a lot. Instead, we we we'll, we'll try to put on a facade, you know, in oh, front of a boy like, yeah. nah, don't worry about it, bro. It ain't nothing. But like real talk, it was something to you. Yeah. And if and is if and if you keep putting that mask on, pretending that it really wasn't nothing, you're not being authentic to the person that you say you care about that you that not you even close to yourself with. either. Because now, yeah, it's like you letting yourself be exactly. In the space so I've gotten I've gotten better with trying to also like be committed to that, like and really kind of being. Letting myself be vulnerable with people that I care about. Not with everybody. I'm talking yeah, specifically the, people that you care about that relationship. Mm -hmm. You want y'all to stay cool and grow together. It's important for you to let those people know. Like, yo, man, like that really kind of like I was bummed, man. Like, yeah, I, I was looking forward to seeing you. You know what I mean? Come yeah. to the show. So, you know what I mean? The better we, I, I think we get with that authenticity too, it's the same magnet effect. The more we are authentic with ourselves. We also encourage those people to be authentic with us. So yeah. I could keep it a buck with you if you got an event coming on. And I'm just like, yo, I just did two double shifts, yo, back to back, bro. Like, I'm available that day. I'm not doing nothing. But I really just want to take a day to just relax, bro. So I'm not going to make it. I might be disappointed, but I respect you because, like, you, you kept you yeah, kept yeah, it a yeah. buck with me. Like, you ain't give me no bull crap like, yeah, I can't make it. I'm... No, you told me the honest thing. Like, yo, you probably had a hectic week and you just want a day to just relax. And my, my event fell on your relax day. Yeah. You know, so all right, cool. Ain't nothing like I respect it. You know, but that's right. that authenticity is stuff that, you know what I mean, we missing a lot of too, man. So going into, while we come to a close, man, we look at 2024 is coming upon us real quick. Um, not sure if this episode will be dropped by, by then or not, but um, I want to hear from just both of you. What's the thing that you would that you want to do better for yourself going into 2024? Like what's the thing you want to just improve first on one. or do better? I like I actually like to go first. Okay. So it kind of gives like, you know, my guest on the show time to think a little bit more about something. Um I want to get better with organizing my time. Like I feel like because I do so many creative things um and I have so many big visions I'm still not disciplined the way I want to be yet with like just organizing all of it. Like, you know, I want to write my next book. I want to get that done. You know, I want to, um, you know, try new ideas with the podcast, you know, doing more podcasts out the studio and on location, you know, so we did a few of them this, this past season. I just passed to the podcast. Um, you know, I went to other people's creative space. I went to their office. I went to their studio. Um, so I want to do more of that, like, outside. Um, so really just get more, like I said, just organized with my visions, man, and be disciplined in that way. I feel that. I feel that. I was side with the time um, aspect of that as well. Um, I mean, I think that's a creative thing. I think every creative's New Year's resolution should be uh, <laughs> getting better with time. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I would say uh, communicating communicating not now i mean because i'm pretty good at communicating but it's like communicating to 
people about what they what I didn't think that they wanted to see from me. Like I think sometimes I get stuck in the fact that since I could put it in a song in three minutes, I don't have to have a conversation with someone for an hour. Wow, that's you know? deep. And yeah. I live a life where a lot of people don't hold me accountable for it. So now that I finally started to see it, he's the only one that really has and kind of just called me on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now that I've seen it, that's something I do want to work on. That's for sure. Fire. Close us out, Jay. No pressure you, I, I thought I was going second. I guess, honestly, the, the main thing that I want to do this year is I want to let God use me in a way that it isn't what I wanted but it's what I needed kind of thing. And I think that to flow in that space and still move as a creative <clears throat> is hard because you feel like, you know, you you have to be so hands-on. So to say that you're willing to let your hands off of what you wanted, and it's, and it's even harder now that I'm getting a little bit more, like, recognition for what I'm doing right now because now it's just extra voices in my ear on top of the ones that I'm Facts. already telling myself. Yep. And I think that to try and seek his voice still in the silence – is where I kind of want to be, like, all the time, but at the same time still being present for the dreams that he's given me originally. And I think that I got some big ideas that I really want to, like, lock in with for 2024. Like, this this fashion show was, like, the start. Like, yeah, it was a dream, but it was, like, that the first five minutes of a two-hour dream kind of thing. And it's, like, in order to put it where I wanted it to be is to, to run it back but do it the way that it could have been done so I could show you how it should have been done, you know? And I think that's where I kind of want to revel is like, you know, I want to, I don't want this to be for me. I want it to be for the creatives around me and for the community. I feel like everybody wants to put on for the city, but they say that so selfishly. Where it's like they want to put on, but it's like you want the profit, you want the recognition, you want yeah, this, that, yeah, and the yeah. third. And it's like, I could say this confidently, I didn't profit. Yeah. I put out more than I made in. And it's like, and I yeah, gave yeah. the creatives a space to, to yeah, be to themselves shine. free of charge. The designers, I didn't charge them a dollar. Like, yeah. Not one designer paid a thing. So it's That's like. That's crazy, bro. I, I, That's I, big. I want that to be something where it's like next year, it's like, it's something that you look forward to. Like I got models saying they won, that that was what made their year. But it's like, I want to give you something to look forward to while giving you a reason to trust God when things don't look cool. So while you're looking forward to the event, you don't give up in the process. I think that's why you got to, I think it's really, really important. I don't know if you was just saying it haphazardly earlier in the show or or before we started the show. I can't remember um, but when you was like, I got to start planning the next one in January. I That's real. Like, like I already got I, the first I really six think, months. Like, yeah, it's I like, really think you got to, you're going to have to do that. Promo video is not starting in September. First one starting in January. Like real talk, man. You really gotta. <laughs> and I, funny enough, it reminds me of because only because I just saw this again with my kids, so it's fresh in my memory. Um, the Elf movie with Will Ferrell. I love that movie. Yo, my favorite Christmas movie. So the the part that's coming to my mind with, with piggybacking off of that is um, it's the beginning of the movie where where uh, you know Will Ferrell when he is a baby he he sneaks into the Santa's bag. Mm -hmm. That's how he ends up at the North Pole. And so Santa comes to the North Pole with the bag. He drops his bag and he tells all the elves, he's like, you know, another Christmas complete. Like, right. So all the elves are like, yeah, yeah. And then you hear the elf go, all right. So now let's get prepared for next Christmas. And then they start building. And it was like, yo. It was immediate. Like, literally, like, it's December 25th, December 26th come. We getting ready for next December 25th. That's what I'm saying, bro. If Santa ain't stopping to get patted on the back, <laughs> we don't need to neither, bro. <laughs> Not <laughs> Santa making a debut, I'm dropping bars. On the Santa, and that's, but that's, that's it, bro. Like, yo, the, the event is done. It's successful. Many of us, you, you know what? There's actually a football, old football, I think uh, Emmett Smith, um, a Super Bowl commercial. That's the similar principle. It's like, it's like now that you won the Super Bowl, um, you know what are you gonna do now or something? And he's like, he's like on the bench, like in the weight room or something. And he's like, he like getting ready for like next season. Like he, it was like it's like it's no you do it again. It's no pause. <laughs> like it's all preparation for the next thing. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. So I really want you to like challenge yourself, bro. You know to keep your foot on the gas, bro. Like 
stay like keep going that's my thing i've been putting in people comments on social media all year bro all capital letters i see somebody post something dope that they doing bro movie stuff acting modeling like keep going Mm -hmm. keep going like don't stop don't get high off the 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 likes yeah off the likes and the accolade like the and for me when, when when you take the leap to do that entrepreneur or that creative thing you do when you take the leap of faith and do it full time, like that's how you eat. That's how you live. Yeah. That's when you really, it gets synced in that you got to keep your foot on the gas. So like I be telling people, I don't even get to tell y'all on social media half of the dope stuff that I do mm-hmm. or that like, I achieve because mm-hmm. I don't have the time yeah, to stop sure yeah. and then like make this big thing about it. It's like, yo, I got to get my next meal in order. Mm-hmm. Like the baby need formula, like and new diapers, <laughs> bro. Like, like if I don't do this again yeah. and get my head ready to keep preparing for the next joint, the next bag, I'm not going to eat. Yeah. Like that's a different reality. You know what I mean? When it's yeah. like, Hard yo. Hard one too, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, and it's nothing like to, you realize in those moments, it ain't nothing to brag about no more. Yeah. It's- like, you, like, you, like, you assessing the situation in a whole different way while everybody else wants to brag on you and Clyde. You like, yeah, all right, thank you. All right, so, what's <laughs> like, you trying to move on and get in sight the next meal, bro. Yeah. So, like, again, man, I'm so proud of you, bro, of, like, just the perseverance, man. I'm proud of you. Or just like your your belief in yourself, because you know me, me and other big bro like Chuck, man. We got a long history with you, bro. Like <laughs> making fun of this dude, clothes stuff, man, all the time, bro. Yeah, I built the monster, man. It's all love, you know what I mean? But you you know our 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 style ain't just your style. Like at the end of the day, um, you know I'm glad, and and you know the saying how the saying go, like you know what I mean? You only really mess with people like that like like who you love like you know what i mean who, yeah, you, who yeah. you care about like um and if i knew you wasn't built for that i would i wouldn't even dare you know what i mean i yeah. I love you that much or, or we love all our, our young people that much you know um that you know what i mean we only gonna throw those hard blows at the ones we think that that could take it, that can take it yeah. like so we know you could take it man um and i'm proud to just see you keep going man yeah, I'll be coming for this dude. I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. Like, I'm not all deep into the fashion joint, yo. I'm a real simple dude, man. Stuff this dude be coming out with, man, where I be like, yo, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> and this dude, like, yo, he he know what he want. He know what, what he like, man. And that's how we got to be with, with any part of your life, man. Like, you know, whether it's your, your faith. You know what I mean? It's the same muscle fibers is tested. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? If you was that weak, like, oh, somebody going to make fun of your shoe or they don't like what you're wearing. You def can't be no person of faith and keep yeah. your faith. Like, there's people talk, making a mockery of you all the time with that. So no, I, I say this like all the time. I was like, I was gonna make a video and say it, and I, I part of me stopped just because I didn't think that people would fully understand the gravity of it. But it's like nobody wanted to walk in my shoes until the shoes had a designer label, and it's like, and in that space, Facts. it's like you could easily give up on being who you are. Easily, and, and yo. lose yourself, and I think easily trying to put on for the the city now. I think the one thing that I can say is that Jesus wasn't received at home. Like he did a lot of his stuff outside of his area because the people oh, there didn't bro. support him. And part of me mentally is like, while I'm trying to do stuff for the community, for the city, and not give up, yeah. I, I I keep that Denzel mindset, like as if I'm are saying like I'm from around the way. Like, yeah. I'm leaving here with something. You yeah. know, like and it's yeah. when you keep that mindset that like you don't belong somewhere, it makes you feel like you fit in even more because they appreciate you so, like you're I not love one that. of them. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I do. Jaden like, is different, y'all. Yo, <laughs> give the people man where they could follow you, man, where they could find you on social media, um, bro. The the handle is style striz S T Y L E dot S T R I Z Z. And if you guys are looking for any of the jackets, any of the pieces that I curated, it's the Striz collection, like as an S T R I Z Z collection. And you know, say shout yourself out, man. Yeah, say let them know where they can find you, bro. Eastside Lenny on all platforms. Eastside. I'm pretty sure I know how to spell that. Lenny L E N N Y. You find me anywhere. Good tunes, good vibes, good direction on my side. 
So. <laughs> Say for any um, other event coordinators listening, you available to model for their shows as yeah, long as it, as long as the standard is that right? <laughs> yeah, I mean standard is everything. I mean, but like I said, I I, I see the vision in a, in a lot of in a lot of small crops. So yeah, man. you know, holla at me. I'm always easily accessible. I know I've been told I have um resting angry person face, but <laughs> <laughs> angry person. <laughs> Trust, I'm approachable. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I love, Yo, it. love it. He's, he said he's not a diva yet, y'all. So he's still he's <laughs> yeah, still reachable, you know. <laughs> 100%. Love it, yo. Yo, thank you so much for coming through. Of course, man. We locked in. You know that. Appreciate you, man. Yo, thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all subscribe everywhere at Free Lunch. That's F R I I. Lunch is free food for your soul. Peace. <laughs>